of everything. Um, so I'm Brady. I am one of the co-hosts uh, for this Junior Developer Happy Hour. We, Sam and I started this group. I was looking back, it was, um, shoot, it was, I think, end of April, which is later than what I thought it had been. So we've been doing this for about three months um, because when it came time for quarantine and, and a lot of companies started downsizing, both of us at the same time kind of realized how it was going to be. It's it's already tricky getting your first job in tech or getting your first job if you don't have any experience. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden we recognized that it was going to be even harder. Um, for people to jump into the industry after they've like gone to a boot camp or if, even if they're in a computer science degree. So that's the purpose of this group. We're trying to get together as many suggestions for you all as we possibly can. And so for the past about three months, we've had special guests come and give their unique perspectives. Um, and I went to a coding boot camp in 2017. I had not really considered doing anything technical for my whole life. <laughs> and at some point I realized that, so I, I did have an interest in learning Spanish and Italian and um, I ended up graduating college and then moving over to Austria. So I learned German in this German speaking country. And Based off of that and not knowing what I wanted to do with my life, I eventually ended up going into this boot camp because I discovered that learning computer languages were really fun too. And I got to make cool things when I was using these computer languages. Uh, so I graduated in the summer of 2017. And then in the fall of 2017, I started my job at Trunk Club. Uh, we recently got acquired much more by Nordstrom. It's been a really long, complicated process. Um, but I've been mostly working with front end for the past year or so. Uh, so the stack that I've been working on is React, uh, Ruby is our back end. We have a Postgres SQL database that we've been using. Um, so that's enough about me. Um, I think I see Amal's here now even too. Yeah, she is. I can do <laughs> a quick intro of myself real quick and then um, uh, I'll let Amal introduce yourself. Yeah, we can hear you now. Can Wait, you can you us? hear me? Oh, good. Okay. I wasn't sure. I was like, la, la, yeah. la, la. anyways, I'll, I'll mute myself now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just introduce myself real quick then I'll let you introduce yourself. Um, Amal does all kinds of things. so. I wouldn't do justice trying to <laughs> introduce her. Um, uh, and also if people have questions, there's a lot of questions in the, the, the slide already. I'll put the questions you want because uh, I don't know if we'll get to everything. And I'm sure you'll have more questions after Amal gives her introduction um, for what she's currently working on, whatever she's done in the past, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I, I'm Sam, uh, so I've been doing this meetup with Brady for, yeah, I guess, I guess it was April. I thought it was March too. I don't know. <laughs> so who knows what day it, I don't, I can't even keep track of what day it is lately. Um, but yeah, I'm a front end engineer at Lyft. I work on internal tools for the mapping organization. Uh, I also went to Dev Bootcamp back in 2013. I was one in. Uh, in one of the early cohorts, um, uh, probably like the sixth cohort or somewhere around there. I forget the exact number. Um, I also have a computer science degree, which is different than a lot of bootcamp grads, but I got my computer science degree a long time ago. I graduated in 2002 at the tail end of the dot-com bust. I ended up giving up too quickly. <laughs> After like six months, uh, I just gave up looking for a job. So I never broke into the industry the first time. I attempted to did all kinds of other stuff, worked in the mortgage industry, joined the Peace Corps. Um, and then when I came back from the Peace Corps, I finally uh, the boot camp stuff was going on and I was like, I gotta, I gotta, 
I got to try again. So I went to that boot camp and I was able to break into the industry the, the second time. The timing was much better um, than when I graduated in the dot com bus. And back in 2002, there wasn't a lot of resources to like continue self learning. And I didn't have any mentors. And, um, I just didn't know what to do. <laughs> I, I lived in Hawaii too. So it was even harder to like find a job. Um, but yeah, that's me. Now let's get to our special guest this week. Um, we have Amal Hussein. And I'll let you introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. So unfortunately, there's a car in my neighborhood that just is going off. Oh, great. It's it's shut down. So um, I think everyone can hear me just fine. I'm yep. All right, so hi everyone. So my name's uh, um, actually it's pronounced Amel, but it's okay. I respond to Amal. I just just, right. just in, in in the in the event that you're able to say Amel, it's Amel. Um, and um, I'm from Boston. Um, and you're gonna hear a lot about me tonight today. But I guess before I get into anything, I just want to say one thing. So if out of everything that I'm gonna tell you today, like this is the one thing I wanna make sure you remember, okay? Everyone's gonna say, yeah, thumbs up. Okay, cool. So you belong here <laughs> and we're so excited to have you. That's what I want you to know. Um, I'm so sick of the gatekeeping in our industry. Um, it's like, it's, it's talk, it's not, it's, it's actually, it's beyond toxic. It's, it's self de detrimental, right? Um, because we have so much to do, uh, you know, with the web, with programming in general, and we don't have enough people to do it. And so like, why, why, why are we not trying to build an army? Right. Um, so, so, so I just want to put that out there first. Um, um, and thank you for that warm and like, thank you for the warm welcome and the invitation. And like, I'm so in like jive with like the ethos of this group and like everything y'all do and stand for. So thank you. I'm so happy to be a part of this. Um, so anyway, so my name is Amal Hussain. Um, I'm a software engineer based in the Boston area. Um, I'm currently a principal software engineer. Um, so it's kind of a, a, a big moment for me in my career because I think a lot of engineers kind of this is like the dream role, you know, to be principal. And it's, I, you know, it, it it's not something I take lightly, you know, that I, I've i been able to have the privilege of having this this job and this role. Um, so um, previous to being a principal engineer, I, I haven't announced the company yet. Um, I will be doing so in a few weeks. So just follow me on Twitter, so you'll find out. But it's a, it's a company that's big enough that, uh, you know, in terms of an engineering presence, uh, it's, you know, a few hundred engineers. It is a software first, it is, it is a software company, but it's not a software first company. So there's like a thing that we do for people in the real world. And it's, and the thing that we do for people in the real world is like important and like makes a difference. And like, so I'm really, just you know, privileged to be working for a company like whose ethics I jive with right now. Um, but anyway, so previously, so now I'm like principal software engineer for me means like I'm in a leadership role, and you know I'm like visible in the organization. Um, I'm an individual contributor, but I'm like a, like a technical lead right for a group of engineers for a series of teams, um, and um, but it means like I don't have direct reports necessarily, which is nice. Right, so like all of the challenges I get to focus on are like technical and organizational. And before doing this job, I was an engineering manager at NPM. <laughs> like, like, fuck my life. <laughs> um, worst job ever, best job ever. Like, you know, best job because I grew a ton and I learned a ton and I learned how strong I am as a human being, <laughs> but, but um, it um, was the worst job ever because it was just like a really crazy place to be at a crazy time. Um, and I was part of the team that went through an acquisition with Microsoft GitHub. So went through that whole fun process and then got laid off. Um, and along with all of the other black software engineers. Oh, I'm black, by the way, I guess just, just in case that's like not obvious. Um, I, I identify as black and woman. 
uh, cis woman, uh, to be specific. Um, and um, what was I going to tell you? Oh, yeah. So NPM, like, you know, all, all the Black engineers uh, were part of the layoff. And so uh, when that happened, you know, it, it's just devastating. You, you never think like, oh, you know, systemic bias is going to hit you. But <laughs> and when it does, it's like really weird. And like a little bit of like out of mind, out of body, you know, experience um, for me anyway. Uh, so anyway, so I was super burnt out after NPM. I ended up like taking like like three to four months off, about well, four, four, four months off in total, I think. Um, but um, about three months off before like even talking to anyone that was like outside of my house, you know? Um, and so uh, it took me two and a half months to start feeling like myself again. So burnout is real and bad, you know? I'm sorry. Like you're like statistically speaking, you're, a bunch of you have either already gone through it once or twice and or will go through it. And I'm sorry, like this industry seems to churn human beings out like paper, you know, it's like so fucked up. Um, so I'm sorry, am I allowed to curse? If that's against the code of conduct, just let me know. No. I don't want to make people uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. speak because you speak. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks y'all, appreciate it. Um, so, you know, yeah, like tech seems to churn people the fuck out. And it's like not healthy and we need to start talking about that, you know? Like I'm serious, like we need to start like being critical about the rate of burnout in our industry and like what can we do to stop it, right? I'm um, sure it's all cultural and communication practices. So like it's not undoable, um, but it's definitely an element of our culture that we really need to influence sooner rather than later, right? So, um, so yeah, so I guess besides that, uh, besides, it took me two and a half months to start feeling like myself. And then three months I like peered my head out and I'm like, okay, cool. What does the world know about what happened at NPM? Like the whole, it's not, it wasn't just like the injustice didn't stop at the layoffs. Like, and I don't want to get into too much detail because, you know, you will find out about this fairly soon from me and lots of other people, but, um, uh, so I just don't want to get into the details now, but um, like no one knew that like all, all five black engineers were laid off in a group of eight or nine, right? Like, like, so, 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 so I mean like, of like the, like we were 62% of the layoffs and we were hundred percent like of like our demographic was 100% laid off, right? Like it's like this like really fucked up like thing when you think about it. And the probability of that happening is so low, right? Like just from a statistical perspective. And so so it's just like, this is bias at work, right? Um, so so I was just really upset about the fact that like people didn't know and they, they thought this whole acquisition like was humane, you know? Cause like I said, it didn't stop with me there's lots of other injustices for people who, you know, weren't laid off that day that happened and are continuing to happen in, in some cases. Um, and so like, I'm sorry, this is just emotion. It's just hard, you know? So I'm sorry, I'm just taking a minute. <laughs> um, so anyway, so I, I, I spoke up about it on Twitter and like that tweet went viral and um you know i'm i'm in a very privileged position to be able to like land such a good job in such a short amount of time after, during a pandemic right like like i am extremely privileged as a person so granted i was laid off but like i'm okay <laughs> you know um but that's not the case for everyone right so like i just had to use my privilege to speak up about it and I'm gonna continue using my privilege to speak up about it. So, um, what else? Uh, so yeah, and before before NPM, I'd say I'm just I guess I'll kind of I'm just going through career highlights. I'll stop at this last job, but um, 
Uh, I, you know, I worked at a really prestigious company called Boku. Um, you may or may not know them, but uh, they've written software that you've used essentially. Um, and so uh, just a very niche kind of company that does a lot of open source work, but also web standards and also like um, works on really hard, complex web applications, like all the niche stuff that like needs to run on like a single board computer or like, you know, uses computer vision and graphics and like, you know, looks like a native app, like, you know, so very complex. So it's like, so I was, you know, really learned and was groomed, you know, by a lot of like deep experts on the web platform. And so, you know, I'm very privileged for that experience because it kind of just like widened my horizons. Like it's, it's, it made me, it's, it's what made me, I think, I've always been very fearless, but I think working at Boku really like it, um, it, 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 it gave my fearlessness like a framework, you know, and like a runway. Um, so that was kind of nice. And, um, and yeah, I've just kind of just been, so I've just been like climbing that like, like ladder from like junior developer to, you know, mid-level to senior, to senior tech lead, to tech lead, project lead, to like, you know, um, engineering manager to principal engineer. So like, I've just been like kind of punching up that like ladder and been, been and aggressively so, right? Um, very aggressively so, like um, the amount of time I've been in this industry and like the rank that I've been able to climb, they just, they don't like add up for like most people, you know, so. Um, How long did it take you to go from junior to where you are now? Um, well, I mean, I, I will say I have been writing software for a decade, but I started writing software professionally in like 20, uh, 2012, uh, you know, yeah, 2012, 2013. So, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I know super like, and that's like extreme focus, dedication and hard work, right? Like nothing less than that. <laughs> nothing short of excellence, right? Because when you look like me, there's no chances, right? Like, you know, just have like, there's no benefit of the doubt. Like you're just having to prove yourself every single time, every single time, you know? So it's like, there's no room for error. Like the room, like the margin for error, error is very low. So when you, when you're a woman or a person of color, that like makes it into this industry and continues to not only stay, but like climb, like you are, you are, you're like a Sherpa, like, like you have so much more baggage on you than everybody else that's on that mountain. Like, so, you know, so you just get better. And so that, that's, that's why I'm, I am like always more hungry than my peers. Let's put it that way. Does that make sense? So, yeah. Hmm. Anyways, I feel like I'm just being so old lady and philosophically, like, I just, I don't know. I'm having a memoir moment, so. Um, but yeah, so that's, I, I mean, so my expertise is kind of like all over the board. Um, the, the further that I've kind of gone in my career, the less I identify with like specific tools and technologies or languages. Like, it's just like more about the problems and picking the tool for the problem. Um, and so, you know, definitely spent a lot of time writing JavaScript, like, and still do. Um, but I've definitely like also done a lot of other things that I think were like non-traditional for like a web developer, right? So like I've done like um, a lot of distributed service work, um, database work, uh, a lot of like automation tooling and scripting CLI stuff. Um, I've done, um, what else? Uh, Oh yeah, cloud, right? Like, um, like I'm working on my AWS cert right now, like as well as learning TypeScript. Like, like, like it's like two different people with you know <laughs> trying to learn two different things from from two different worlds at the same time. You know, um, also trying to like get a Linux certification because I like I don't want to be a sysadmin, but I like want to impress one. You know, and it's like really foundational knowledge that like I want to take with me for the rest of my life. Like, like anything with Linux, Bash. Unix, POSIX, like it's your, you learn once, use, use forever, you know, um, think about LS, think about PWD, right? Uh, make their, 
like how many times like you know you 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 what you learned that when and you're still like you use it and you never forget it right because it's it's like it's the one constant in all of your like it's it's the one constant in your software experience like you know those conversations with your computer um so um you know so it's it's a very good investment what do you think about linux academy did you see that website i i keep That's looking at thinking. it Oh, uh, that's you using? Mm -hmm. I look, uh, the it's hands on look, look cool, yeah. I yeah. keep looking at it, but I never signed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's expensive, but I mean, I'm privileged. However, if I would, I'm sure if you emailed them in the event that you wanted to do that and a uh, price was a barrier, I'm, I'm fairly certain they would give you a deal or give it to you for free. I'm like pretty sure. Like it's that I kind of- I reach out to them too, yeah. to see if they have any kind of- um, Discounts, yeah for students. I did that for front end masters and they had some stuff, um, some special kind of things. Yeah. Like if you can get the GitHub educational. Um, I, s somehow you can sign up on GitHub for some GitHub educational pack. You yeah. need to show like uh, you're enrolled at at least a community college or something. Oh, but like in San Francisco, community college is free. So you can just sign up and then Get the GitHub thing and then get free six months of <laughs> and then masters. Yeah, yeah, I haven't tried it, but I I, I think that might work. Um, yeah, I I'm like educative a lot these days. I've always liked educative, but like they've gotten really good because I've been I have a couple people that I mentor and I like um was trying to find good resources for them on interview prep and educative had the most. It was like the most. It was like the one stop shop. Um, they have a lot of really good courses on interviews. They have interview tracks, but even beyond the tracks, they have additional courses that are just like, you know, there's five different courses on like JavaScript data structures, for example, or like, you know what I mean? Um, so definitely really, really good. And they have, um, and there's like a, if you like Google for it, or you know what, I can send you a referral. I was gonna say, I, there's like a 10% discount that's available somewhere on the internet, but I can also give you, give you all my referral, referral code. You'll save like, like yeah, like uh, twenty four dollars, I think, or something like that. But anyway, or maybe more. Um, but it's worth it. Like at the annual subscription, and it's it's it's, it's really worth it because I think it's just there's lots of good stuff for like beginner, intermediate, advanced. You know, so. But yeah, so yeah, so, yeah, so that that's my spiel. Um, so you can ask me about lots of different things. Oh, um, and I, I guess I do a lot of community work too. I like. Uh, I run a community in Boston, like an inclusive community that's a uh, Cambridge Google developer group. And so we have like a fairly good representation of like different people at our events. I'm really proud of that. But obviously it's been a long time since we've done anything. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, uh, and then obviously I think for two for two reasons, one is like NPM like light, sucked the life and soul out of me and I had no energy after work. So I like got behind and then and then the pandemic, you know. So then it was just like, and then, no, the, then the acquisition work, and then the pandemic. So it's just, it just, it just like my life has been like, like a shit show for like well over a year now. Um, so, uh, you know, um, and I podcast. So I, I podcast at the Web Platform Podcast, and then I have most recently finally joined JS Party. So change logs, JS Party. I'm, I'm on that now. Um, actually, my first show just published like yesterday. So funny, uh, but but um, um, yeah. Like I I was supposed to join that show like last year. They invited me. I, I just didn't have the time. And now that I'm back in an individual contributor role, I have I have the mental bandwidth to like do this. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, floor is yours. What well, what was that new podcast that? Oh, JS Party. JS Party. Yeah, if y'all want to link it. Okay, we'll look yeah. it up. And I'll, I'll try, yeah. Okay, and the way this usually works is um, Brady usually moderates. There's a bunch of questions in the Slido. We usually go from top down. So everybody, if this is your first time, Slido links at the top of the chat in Jitsi. Um, upvote questions if you want to like bump it to the top. Otherwise it's in like, um, we go in reverse chronological order. Um, if um, it just um, slido like orders it like that. Uh, Brady, you there?
I'm still here. <laughs> There's something weird with my charger going on. So I'm going to read the first question and then try to change it, change up my charger. Oh, my cool. Where, where, where are people submitting questions? Oh, oh it, didn't, it didn't slide. Oh, let me, let me bump the link. No, to the... no, no worries. I, I, I don't even want to, I don't want to cheat and see them. So. <laughs> um, all right. So then the first question here is, uh, how would you suggest a junior engineer could strengthen their problem solving skills? Mm. Oh, good question. Okay. So I consider myself an expert problem solver so much so that it's even in my bio now, right? Like that's like really audacious to tell a bunch of engineers, like I'm good at something like, yeah. And I, but what, like, I'm really good at problem solving. So I, I, I challenge anyone to challenge me on that. Um, so with that said, um, I got really good uh, through practice um, and repetitive, like you, 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 you're, you're, you're not gonna, like there's no like guru moment where like you're sitting in, at, you know, at your desk meditating in Zen and like, you, you know, you figure out how to solve a problem like in a minute, like that only comes from practice and not necessarily leak code and stuff like that. I, I, I don't actually think that that's the kind of problem solving that I'm even talking about. I'm talking about like problems in software which are intersectional with people, process, code, and change, right? Like, like ma managing that, <laughs> right? And you get that when you work on an open source project with other people and you need to collaborate on a PR or changes, right? You, you, you get that when you organize a community and you have to build something from nothing, right? Like you get that anytime you stretch out of your comfort zone. And so you have to continually feel comfortable stretching out of your comfort zone. And that is how you're gonna become a good problem solver. And it has to never, ever stop, like never stop. Like every, like sometimes I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm like going through one of my, like I, I work in cycles. So I have like, like I give myself like two months of like work, 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 focus, 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 focus. And like a month of show, you know? And then I ramp it back up, you know? And you know, I, I work in cycles. And so if I'm in a down cycle, I'll maybe say, okay, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give myself an incremental goal of like 0.1 per, you know, point, like point, point two five. Uh, but if I'm in a hyper growth phase, like my incremental goals are much higher than that. Meaning that like, if I'm having my downtime, I'm not going to give myself shit about like, oh, I didn't read a technical book or, oh, I didn't, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening in the JavaScript world right now. Like, you know, like I don't give myself shit about that if I'm in a down, down period, but because I'm learning and there's still like peripheral things that I do with podcasting or what, I, like where like I'm constantly learning. So there's this like, um, there's like this, like just a sl slow burn effect that's happening in the background always. But like when I push it, I really push it, you know? Um, and I'm very, com like you have to be comfortable with like getting out of your comfort zone and like tackling new problems and like wanting to like be curious and like, like always ask why and question everything, you know? Make everything better. Like you have to always want to make everything better if I had to summarize it. Um, I like that idea of the cycles. I, yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, how I avoid yeah. burnout. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Burnout is real, so mm -hmm. um, just pay attention. <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> in, in small small. What is that? Oh yeah, you can even do like two weeks, like two weeks of on, one week of off. Right. You yeah. don't. Have to, you don't have to. It doesn't have to always be a long stretch. Everybody's different, so you gotta just kind of like feel it out. It takes a while, I think, to like to like learn because if you hit burnout that it's not good <laughs> have, you, have you been burnt out ben i'm burnt out right now i took monday oh. and tuesday off <laughs> oh god hearts um, off man yeah but um I feel like people who are taking care of young children are yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't be able to do that <laughs> like techies who have kids at home now like that's like whoa i don't know how they do it yeah i don't know how they do it but, yeah. <laughs> um, here, I'll, I'll move on to the next question. Can you share a little about your developer story and how you got your first job in tech? Any major learnings or recommendations? Yeah, good, good question. Um, I, so my, um, I, 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 I like uh, got involved with like 
the startup scene and like um, a ha hackathon scene in college and like kind of like dropped out when I realized I just wanted to write software. <laughs> so, Were you studying um, computer science? Bi biomedical engineering and math. So like close enough. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was still an engineer. Um, so, and I, I think that's a huge advantage to me too, like not having a traditional comp sci background and like being in another world for a while because it, you know, it really, yeah, it just like rounded me out as a person, you know? I hate people who like only know software and nothing else. Like, you know, it's like software is not the goal. <laughs> like it's the thing behind the software that's the goal, right? So um, anyways. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, so, so yeah, I just did that. And then I like did like a bunch of like pro bono work for startups. And then I did paid work for startups, like consultant, like freelance work. And then um, I decided like then, I, then like Ruby on Rails was like the hot thing. And I was like, oh, I should like learn this, you know? And I was still like a student at the time as well to some degree. So um, I was like, okay, cool. I went, I did um, uh, General Assembly's uh, web development immersive. That was good. Um, so I learned Rails, but never used it after that. <laughs> um, but then I basically decided after going through General Assembly that I was like done freelancing and that I wanted to like um, uh, do work, you know? So uh, I just got a full-time job right after that, uh, just through like work, like networking event. Uh, the One of the people uh, who was hiring and I, like we went to the same college and he um, like, you know, really liked me when he met me and he followed up with me and like uh, he hired me. Yeah, I, that, that's how I got hired. And I it was at a really big educational technology company and I was really lucky to end up there because um, uh, I, I was lucky to end up there because they had a really good culture of like not pigeonhole, pigeonholing developers into like specific stacks or tools. So it was like, you're an engineer, you should feel comfortable going up and down the stack and we're never gonna pigeonhole you, you do what you like. And then, and we encourage you to, to, to push yourself often to like do, you know, like learn new things and not stay in one place, switch teams, switch, you know, so like, and they had a, a really good culture of like agile uh, development. Like they, they had a lot of good scrum masters and a good culture there. And they had a good culture of feedback very open, complaining, retroing, continuous improvement, like, you know? So I, was, so I never was ever afraid to like call shit out. <laughs> like even as like a junior developer, I would call shit out all the time. Um, so, uh, so, you know, so that kind of kind of set the, and then they like had good t testing culture and learning culture and all that. So it was a very good place to start my career. So I was there for three years and then, yeah, then left because I kind of capped out at my growth there and um, was ready for new challenges. But I actually was promoted every single year while I was there, which was kind of nice. And they, they like loved me and they were really sad to see me go. <laughs> and I was sad to see, I was sad to leave too, but also like, yeah, like I just, I knew I wanted more. So. I was ready for a senior title. I left as a software engineer three and I was like, no, nah, I want to be senior now like, because I'm better than most senior engineers here. So, <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah, but then um, during that time also, they, the, that company um, sponsored, um, that company sponsored uh, like a, the Angular JS meetup because Angular had just come out and everybody was like, oh, you know, and we started using it and we were trying to recruit people who knew Angular. So my company started sponsoring the Angular, Boston JS Angular meetup. And that's how I kind of got involved with community. Um, because I would like help the, I was like the liaison between my company and the Angular meetup organizers and like, and then made friends and then started going and getting value. And then I went from the person that was like attending meetups to like, I went out to the, per to the person that was speaking at them. And then I went to like being the person that was organizing them, you know? So it was this like linear progression over time for me with community. Like I just like kind of scaled up my involvement with that a lot. Um, and uh, it's still my first passion to be honest, you know, like community over code like any day. Um, and yeah, so I guess that's, that's really it. Like I just was lucky, smart, impressed the right person at the right event. Um, but I also 
there was tons of companies who were interested in interviewing me at the time as well. So I had my kind of pick of the litter. I was very lucky. It was, it was a good time. Good time to be looking for a job in 20, like, you know, like end of 2012, beginning of 2013. Yeah, that was like, a really yeah. good time. Yeah, so the market, we talk about it all the time. The market goes through cycles. So um, two wings back and forth <laughs> um, in the developer's favor and out of the favor <laughs> and back. Do you think do you think it's gotten out of the developer's favor now? I, I'm I'm not in touch with the reality here. Can you educate me on this, Ben? It's, um, it's <laughs> been pretty um, tough, I think, for junior developers. For junior it's, devs, yes, yes, yeah. Um, it's never bad. Anec anecdotally, it seems to slowly be getting better, just from people that I've been interacting with. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. I don't have any like large data figures to know if it really is getting big, um, better, but um, uh, just from like, I talked to a lot of junior developers and like lately I've been talking to junior developers and they are finding jobs and that wasn't the case like a couple months ago. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I agree. Um, we, I also don't really have the data, but it just, I, I I have been working with people who have been getting jobs, and then I am seeing more of that on LinkedIn. People talking about, "Yeah, I got my first job." Yeah, so that's great. It's, it seems to be getting better. Um, okay. I actually just scheduled a meetup next month on September 26 with a few bootcamp graduates who were um, able to find jobs, like just in this past month. Um, yeah. and they're, they're all recent bootcamp graduates. So wow. we're going to try some, we're going to try something new. It's kind of, um, we're going to have a panel, that, panel of special guests. <laughs> that sounds like a great event. I would love to attend. I'll, I'll RSVP for that. That's, that sounds phenomenal. Yeah. I would love, grab, to, uh, I would love I'll to grab, hear from them. I'll you grab know. the link. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, and so, um, you know, yeah, I, 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 I mean, it's like, I'll tell you this as somebody who's been like junior, mid, senior, and now I've been senior longer than I have been junior at this point, right? Like, so, so, so um, we need a lot more junior developers because junior developers are good. They are hungry. They are ready to learn. They listen, they get their shit done. They're not in arguing over syntax and design patterns all day, which is what a bunch of fucking senior devs do, myself included, you know? Um, and so, so y'all get shit done. And we also kind of really fucking suck as an industry when it comes to career tracks. So you have these companies where like you have a senior engineer that's like five years of experience and like one that has like 20 years of experience and they have the same fucking title. Like what kind of bullshit is that, right? So so like we don't have a good like industry-wide practice of like the ha like team structure, right? Like you need more soldiers than lieutenants. You need more lieutenants than captains, right? Um, and so like yeah, like it, it's not even good for their growth. Like, so the people that are doing all the gatekeeping, like they've fucking capped out at their growth, right? Like they're not, they're like they're gatekeeping because they, out of insecurity, let's be clear, right? <laughs> because I can tell you as anybody, anybody with any ounce of like confidence or security, like in themselves, like just doesn't like, like, like they're never gonna like gatekeep. Like I, when I see people that are interested in like helping me not do, like, like I want to do more interesting work. I can't move on to doing more interesting work until I have people who can do what I do. So I can go work on more other things. Does that make sense? So like I'm held back by this problem. And, and I think, I think, you know, I think I should, I should talk about this more openly because I, you know, I, I think people don't realize like if you let in more people that are junior, you're just now more senior. Like, like it, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't take away from you. Right. Like, does that make sense? Um, yeah, totally. It's just so stupid, you know? And so it's fear, it's insecurity. It's the same shit you see with immigrants in this country with all these like, you know, white power Nazis that are like, fuck immigrants, Ugh, give me a taco, you know, like fuck yourself. Um, so like, you know, you're like talking about, immigrants while like you get to eat food that they cooked for you and they picked for you and you're wearing clothes that they made for you like 
you don't get to fucking like, you don't get to eat your cake and have it too, right? Like, and so, uh, you know, it's the same same attitude. Um, and so it, it pisses me off uh, because we have so many people that are just like waiting on the sidelines who are ready to work. And a lot of them end up like choosing to walk away eventually, right? Like how long are you gonna stick around waiting for a job? So anyways. I don't know if that answered your question. I don't even remember the original question. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was about- Just went on a uh, rant. <laughs> yeah, it was about how you like got started, um, I think. Um, oh yeah, I question, think I answered that. The question disappeared. <laughs> I did have one question about um, your pro bono work. Um, how did you find like your pro bono work? Were you just referred or did like, just well, non you know, nonprofits you were interested in or what? Both, all of the above, referred nonprofits. And I like um, did work with like one person that introduced me to a lot of other people, but also like the, um, I was based out of the, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the companies that I was doing pro bono work with were based out of the CIC, like, which is like a co-working space, some, you know, and that was, it's, it's CIC is like Cambridge Innovation Center. It, it's, it's the original co-working space. So CIC invented co-working for startups. And so it's like the K Kendall Square, like, which is very close to where MIT is. Like it has the highest concentration of startups in the world because of like the CIC buildings. And like every, there's like there's like 50 startups on a one floor, you know, it's crazy. So 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 I was there in the like middle of like startup land, and everybody needed help getting shit out the door. And so I just did that uh, for some people for free, and then eventually when I was good enough, not for free. So I got to kind of like train myself adding value, and then once I was like, okay, cool, I can charge for this, and I know what I'm worth. Then I started charging for it, right? So sometimes you have to take a hit to get yourself in the door. That's like not, not only is it not uncommon, I would encourage it. Like just do free work until you know how good you are and stop doing free work. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, cause it's, it, cause, cause it's like one of the, it's a chicken and the egg situation, right? People are like, we would hire you if you had experience, but then you can't get experience without being, you know, like you can't get, ex like you're blocked from being able to get experience if they won't hire you. Like, so it's, you know, so, so you can get around that by the saying, I'll just do it. And ideally it's for like a good company or as a nonprofit, like where you feel good about your work, not just, you know, doing something that's ex exploitative, right? Like I wouldn't recommend giving a marketing company pro bono work if, 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 if you get my drift, like, you know, have it be a company that is in line with your ethics and have it be something that you're gonna be proud of talking about with your future employers. You know, does that make sense? That's yeah. a theme that I feel like comes up a lot. Um, and I felt really odd recommending that at first, but I did that when I got out of boot camp. Yeah. I worked for free. Uh, turns out, Sam, you did that too. Um, and and I mean, I was only working for free for like three weeks to be very clear. <laughs> three, to four, still, three to four weeks. Yeah. How did you, um, how did you approach them though? Like <laughs> like some people, they just like, I, I just saw it. Yeah. Like I'll do anything for free, but then like, no, I didn't get the company to talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. I used to go to a lot of events like, so Cambridge, Boston, Cambridge is specifically Cambridge. It's like the tech hub here. And like, there's just always events like networking startup. Um, there's like uh, demo days, this, that, and the other thing. So I would just like go to events and I would connect with people doing interesting things. And then I would say, Oh, cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'd love to help you with that. And like, so we first connect as a as a as people, and then like and for me secondarily, there has to also be interest for me in what they're doing, and then I'll just like offer my help, and they'll like nine times out of ten they're they're gonna take it. Yeah, that, that's that that's totally how I got all of my software engineering jobs. I haven't applied to any of the jobs. Yeah, <laughs> me neither. I've never applied to a job. I'm the same way. I just went to lots of meetups, became involved in lots of communities, started study groups. Yep. like all that kind of stuff. Like I would just take a class and then I would start a study study group because it was hard. <laughs> and then I became friends with all the people in the study group. And like every time like somebody would like from one of these like groups of people that I hung out with, I would get referred um, by a job later, later on. Um, so yeah, uh, we got a, a 
similar question um, in the on the Jitsi chat. Um, so how do you feel about open source contribution? So this relates kind of to the super global. super that, that 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 yeah. If you can do it in open source software, even better for you because you can talk about your work openly as well as have them inspect the code. Right? <laughs> so, do so, you yeah. have any recommendations on? Um, projects that how, are how to, how to find like the right project to work on or for like a new person like I think a lot of people are scared to like jump into it <laughs> yeah I, I agree um, that's a really good question so I, I would say what are what are what are you interested in learning and start from there right and ideally even better like if there's a tool that you use that you like that makes you happy and smile um, or if there's a tool that you you have to use but it makes you angry, right? Like those are those are those are good places to start being curious. And I want to also let you know that like open source contributions are not just about pushing code. Like it's about like there's a whole like that's like fifty percent of it. The other fifty percent is like road mapping, planning, triaging issues from community members. You know, like helping answer questions that have been answered before. Like linking issues. There's so many valuable things like that you can do for a project like and like and never push code, you know, um, organize the maintainer stuff like there's so much, you know, so um, like just find something that excites you. You're y'all are engineers. I know you have a tool. You do something that makes you happy or angry and just like contribute, contribute more to make it better or contribute more to keep it awesome. Like, you know, um is, is that is that you know does that make sense like i and don't don't fetish fetishize like brands like don't don't be like i need to contribute to react core or else i'm not doing open source contribution right like who gives don't give a shit about the project stars like this is not like this is like it's like life like you know how like you shouldn't compare yourself to others it's like that right like for me like Code is code. All, 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 all things are equal. It's like, what problems are they solving and who solves that problem the best? Like, that's how you judge, right? Like, so, like, you shouldn't try to find some big, big project. Just find something that needs the help and that you're excited about. Like, that's the perfect intersection. And ideally, one that has, like, empathetic maintainers that are willing to shepherd you and mentor you and just let them know you should, like, let them know that you're actually interested in helping and, you want you'd love to set up like a 30 minute informational interview or whatever to see like what, what what can i do to help and like how can i onboard onto this project or whatever right so yeah that's a good idea i never thought about that i'm setting up the informational interview with the the maintainers of the open source project yeah i think um, i feel like that's mainly what holds people back they if they could have that informational interview maybe they could get a little bit of better of an idea of like how to not mess up a PR or something. Yeah, well, th th this is twofold, right? Like in the sense that not every project is, has good hygiene around documentation and specifically like the contributing guide and or, you know, so I don't know if y'all are familiar with the contributing guide. So if you look around next time you're on an open source project, just look, you'll see, you might see a contributing.md. Or, or 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 something that links out to contributor guidelines, and so that's just that's just like your social contract. Like if you want to contribute, they kind of give you the like how to set up, how to this, how to that. You know, like it just you know. But not every project does that, so you know it makes it more complicated. But also, if you are interested in doing more, like like it's always good to. It's always nice to connect. It's it's always nice to still connect with the maintainer if you can async or synchronously because um, you you want to you want to see where they really need the help and jump in there first right because sometimes their backlogs are not even updated with everything that they need to do um, so you know you can help them with that as well yeah I just posted a link I made like a project that's like low barrier it's just like a random project that doesn't even do anything it's just 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 to get people to like get used to, to the process of making pull requests. So in the contributing, it just said like, <laughs> it's kind of like a game. It's like, just add something and then tag somebody else. And then um, I still need to figure out like how to do, I've been doing all the pull requests, but I think I would like like other people to start reviewing and yeah. stuff. 
Hint, hint, yeah. nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <clears throat> That was, a very, been, that, was a very, that was a very shameless promotion, Sam. <laughs> well, I made it to try and like get people to like used to to the open source like um, process. Yeah. See, Mary said they'll help. <laughs> awesome. It's already working. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, I'm gonna read another question if that's all right with everybody. Um, as a senior developer, what is important to you? in a team, what skills and qualities do you look for in your junior team members? It's a really good question. So I am I just onboarded to my new company, new job, really happy by the way. Um, so I started and then like a week later, two, new, two other engineers on my team started. Um, one is mid-level and one is um, junior, uh, mid-level senior and one is junior. And I'm just having a blast with them because I have like an onboarding cohort it feels like within my team like there's all these we're the new people and we're we're extra friends because we we're the ones stuck in orientation trainings and like all the same onboarding meetings you know like together and it's really nice so um so one of them is fresh out of college and he's such an impressive dude um because um um he's like so curious and eager to do good and like willing to take chances and ask questions and like not be shy about saying i don't know and you know and like i just love that um you know so just to give you my experience with that so this is happening to me right now i just but 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 the, all that aside in general like if i'm hiring or or you know just what the goals are for my a team that i would be on um for me a, you know i want a team that's like open, honest, and like um, res respectful and trust, trust, tr like has trust with each other, right? Because when people have trust, like they're willing to take chances and take risks, and they're also willing to give you honest feedback. And if you can't give honest feedback, like, you know, you're just gonna have a dysfunctional team, right? Like, so you just all need to be really honest with each other about like good and bad. Um, and there shouldn't be like a gossip culture on your team, right? Like, I don't want, I don't, I'm not like, I'm not paid to like, I'm not like, pay, like my emotional, like I'm not paid to do emotional labor at work. Like I'm not, I'm not into that. Like when I'm at work, it's about work. It's never about anything else. You know what I mean? And so there just needs to be, I think that level of professionalism, but also that level of like, like there needs to be tr tr trust there in, in order to, to promote that and trust promotes a no gossip culture, right? Like, cause gossip happens when people are afraid to give the other person feedback. So. So they gossip about them and then that person gets the feedback indirectly, you know? Like it's like the most fucked up thing if you think about what what is gossip? Like gossip is somebody who's too coward to like call somebody out on their shit right then and there, right? So they went and talked to, about it behind their back. <laughs> and, then, like, and then like, it'll get to them and like through some inverse like way and it'll be like all kinds of distorted by the time it gets to them as well. So it's, you know, it's kind of funny that way. Um, but, uh yeah so just open teams that have good communication and like um you know uh teams that are i think where uh, there's no heroes right so um and at the company that i work for they they are very intentional about not hiring heroes they don't want a hero culture uh if you're familiar with hero culture if you're not familiar with hero culture it's basically like when like there's always that one person that gets called in to save the day because they're the only one that knows how to work that funny thing over there right? Like ultimately like what that does is it creates a bunch of bottlenecks in your system, right? So like people have their siloed domain expertise and they're never really like pushed to like do more and or they like, they become a sacred cow within the company, right? Like it's, it's just weird. Um, so, so, so no heroism, right? We, we all can do each other's jobs. We can all do each other, we all know each other's roles and like respect that. Um, but specifically for a junior dev, like I'm looking for curiosity, willingness to learn and like hustle, hustle hungry and creativity. Like I, I, I almost value like the hustle factor as high as creativity factor for me. Like, like a creative hustler is gonna like, they're gonna, they're gonna do good, you know? <laughs> um, so I, I, I personally value creativity, but, um, but that, that's, a, that's harder to judge, but so that's like a bonus. I don't think that's like a hiring requirement. It's just, it's a bonus if you get someone that's creative. But for me, like, like I said, like hung, like overall, like hunger, willingness to learn, eagerness, 
um, someone that's looking to just, yeah, continually improve themselves and grow, listen, open, open to feedback, res like receptive to feedback, um, very open communicator. Um, open communication is very important for junior devs because they're gonna be in the deep end and there are gonna be times where they're like in too deep. And, you know, and so I need someone who's gonna be willing to be vulnerable and say like, oh, this is hard or oh, I can't do this or, you know, like you have to be willing to, 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 to say, not only do I not know, but I cannot do, I need help from this person to help, you know what I mean? Um, so just, I just, I just see a lot of junior devs like kind of like struggle and float and they try to like do it all and figure it out all on their own. And it's like not healthy, like it's not good for you or the company, right? um so so you know but also like, like you know I, I also want to make sure like i'm not into like there are like npm was a really good example of this like npm was in no position to have any junior developers right like they, they, they it was not a company that was in a position to like groom and mentor and take on that responsibility like i consider like having a junior developer on your team a privilege it means that you're stable enough as an org to be able to take on the responsibility of mentoring a new person into this community right like it's not, it's not, it's like, it's, it's, it, 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 it's, it's a privilege and a burden, right? And you don't want to take that on because like you're fucking up someone's whole life. Like you don't want to fuck with that. Like it just fucks with their head because they don't know any better. They don't know that you're the one that's dysfunctional in this relationship, not them. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so, so, so you just don't want to do that to someone's first job. Like, you, you know, until they have the confidence to be able to navigate danger from safety, like they, you know, you just, you just, they need to always be in safe environments. So you just, so as you're looking, make sure that they have had other junior developers there and who have successfully ideally moved on to not junior roles. And you also want to make sure that the company is big enough. Like I don't recommend startups, small startups for, for, I don't, I, it's quite frankly, like any small or medium startup, I wouldn't even recommend like a large startup that's about to IPO, like fine. But, you know, I would really stick with like companies that are on the stock market. You know, I, I really would. That's an interesting measurement. Um, I had heard when I was looking for a job, like a team of 50 developers. Yes, minimum. minimum yeah. Yeah, because because you're going to need room to flail. And when you're in a startup, there's so much chaos and churn and also there's not enough people. So you're working and you're stretching yourself really thin. And I've seen startups like take advantage of junior engineers and they, and then like they make all these poor design choices or they build shitty software that the company then has to maintain. And then like, you know, it's just, uh, I mean, it's, so just, just make sure there's a track for hiring junior devs. Like they've done this before. Um, and that the people who have been hired there have been able to progress upwardly, right? So, um, and, and, and you can ask these questions if you'd like after you get an offer. You know, I usually, after I get an offer, I typically always have like a follow-up interview or series of interviews where I ask um, deeper questions before making my decision. I mean, I did that even with this, with this company. I, I had two follow-up interviews after my offer. Actually three, if you count the one with HR. Um, for clarification. So, you know, it's a big decision. You shouldn't take it lightly. And sometimes these kind of questions are hard up front, right? But like once you have an offer, you know that they're invested in you and, and it, you're not doing them or you a favor if, if you start and you're unhappy, right? So it's like, you better, like, let's just, let's just let it all out of the closet now and make sure this is going to be a happy relationship, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just want to um, reiterate that um, it's really important to own what you don't know um, so that the senior developers can really help you because um, that's their job. Mentorship, I, at least at my company, yeah. several past several companies I've been at, the role of senior engineers is literally on their roles and responsibilities is mentorship. So don't ever let them yeah. make you think that that's not their job. It is their job. That's why so, they have the title. Like, <laughs> Yeah, so if they're explaining something to you and you just completely don't understand, make sure you like stop them and like explain all these like little things. I don't understand all these words you're saying. Because um, if you're just like, okay, then <laughs> it's harder for them to help you. It's better to just own what you don't know and it helps the other people help yeah. you better. 
Um, but I know that's difficult to do um, just because you don't want to, nobody wants to feel stupid, but I mean, there's so much to learn. You got to just like own what you don't know. So Nobody wants to feel stupid, but I've also put myself in a situation where I was trying to like, we have invoices that we would work with. They would get into strange states. So at my company that on my first uh, team, that was one of the things that would occasionally come up. And that specific example was a very confusing process to fix. And I would every like month or so it would come up where I had to fix it. And it got embarrassing. It was like, one of my coworkers had to explain it to me six or seven times because I didn't just take the time the first time to actually understand it. So it gets worse if you don't just own up at the beginning and say like, hey, let's draw this out. Let's talk it through. Like getting yeah. ahead of that at the beginning is way better. <laughs> totally. Before you start coding, you should definitely understand <laughs> understand what the problem is and come up with a plan about like what you're going to do. Um, I think a lot of juniors um, just jump straight in and just try to build the whole thing, even if it's like something complicated um, without like really understanding what the problem is and what problem that they're trying to solve. Um, so just something to, to think about. Amel, you're and, muted again. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. And that makes people like that. My that makes my job really difficult, right? I come in a year later and I have to clean up that mess. So don't leave a mess for me, okay? Just say you don't know, <laughs> and pair and learn. And it's okay yeah. to not be productive for your first three to six months. Don't beat yourself up about it. That's expected. Engineers are very expensive to train and onboard. That's why retention is so important, right? Because like they cost a lot to onboard. So you're not like yeah. immediately productive right away. The other thing I was gonna say is like, it, you know, it does help to immediately try to find allies at the company and specifically on your team, right? So sometimes I know you might not be comfortable like with everyone being, you might not be comfortable being vulnerable with everyone. Like I understand that. So find someone that you can be vulnerable with, right? Find up, find up, find mentors, peer mentors. They don't have to be even a uh, senior or anything like they can just be your peers, right? And they they are there to help you understand and synthesize something that maybe you didn't understand as well as they did, right? Uh, but 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 I really would encourage you to build allies on your team, like that. You you need that secret network, like. And I'll tell you, this is like a brown woman, right? Like, I fucking have a secret network of people that support me at every company that I am in. Um, quite frankly, like, um, and. And they're not, they're not people who necessarily even look like me, right? Like most of my allies at work are actually white dudes, not just at work, even in, in life. You know? <laughs> and so, um, you know, most of my pe people, people that really have pushed me to where I am, you know, don't look like me. So, so just don't, don't be afraid to lean. I just look at the intention, right? So you have people, you know, we're so fucked up in this country. Everything is about race and, like it's about intention, right? Like, cause like race doesn't matter if you're an asshole, right? Like, so, so you find the people that have the right intentions and that are excited to groom you and or be, be a, be an open feedback vehicle and, you know, like lean on them. Like you're gonna need support, especially your first three years, like three to four years, like you're gonna need like a person that you speak with regularly for like feedback and advice and, you know, and ideally a few different people. So you have different perspectives and you're like able to spread the love, you know? <laughs> so, so yeah. So just like, keep that in mind. You need to start building your posse in a sense. Yeah. And the way you can do that is when you get in, you can um, just like schedule coffee with like different people or just like schedule one weekly one-on-ones after you find like people that you connect with. That way it's like in their calendar and you have like time to like chat with them every week um just see how is it going if they have any like um recommendations for what you can do uh stuff like that so yeah it's 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 okay to come in and just be like i'm gonna schedule coffee with every single person on this team or if you don't like coffee just take a walk or whatever <laughs> or um since we're remote now just schedule 
10 minute zoom call to just get to know each other um that will like help you find the people um that you might connect with just finding out like people you have things in common with like outside of work it helps a lot like even when i've had conflict with like somebody at work once we found something that we connected with outside of work it, we never had conflict again <laughs> Um, we just had really different like opinions on like coding. So like sometimes P PRs would just um, take too long, but like it went a lot faster once we like became like friends because we both liked skateboarding. Like <laughs> um, so it's just random stuff like that that helps you connect with other human beings. We all want to connect. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I was I I noticed I felt better pairing with people who had been through that same uh, entry level position that I had been through. So mm -hmm. I felt like they they knew where I was coming from type thing. I yeah. like that. Brady was it maybe because I, I, I feel like sometimes they're they're able to explain things to you much better in, like than someone that's a little bit more removed from being new. Right. Like. I feel like you, you new people, the people, people that are people that have been writing software for like just a few years more than you. I feel like they they're better teachers sometimes, you know, because like they get the like they get the hard parts, right? Like I have bias, like I, I have bias, right? Like I don't always get the hard parts anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm you know, took took many years to get there, right? <laughs> and you'll get there too. <laughs> But like, you know, it might be nice to just uh, find someone that's like, like Brady said, like just ahead of you ever so slightly, you know, I was like, I remember that. This is how I, this is how I, that's how I jumped over that river. Like, you know, <laughs> that's how I avoided that dragon. Like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, here we've got another question. Um, Wait, are, who is asking all these questions? Like I, I, would love to know. Are, are, are oh. they anonymized? I can't. Uh, well, this one isn't. This one is from Rudy. Um, Hi, Rudy. Who's Rudy? Rudy, you want to see the thumbs up if you have the grid view open. <laughs> hey, I'm Rudy. Thank you, Hi, Rudy. What's going on? Doing good. Doing good. Listening. Listening yeah. to every every word you say. Oh, great! Yeah. Take notes, kids. Rudy, do you want to ask your question? <laughs> Rudy's a Rudy's a Rudy's a usual too. He comes a lot. He just made up. Oh, nice. Yeah, I love it. Great community. Um, so yeah, I can read my question. So yeah, my, recommend, my, my question was um, recommendations on finding your passion in programming. Um, how did you find uh, what technologies you really enjoy working with? Was it kind of, did you find that kind of on the job or was it more through kind of side projects? Mm, great question, Rudy. Um, so I'm gonna say something that y'all are gonna like hate. You ready? you do not have the privilege of liking tools and technologies. You do not have the privilege of liking tools and technologies. You have to focus on your foundations. You need to learn languages. You need to learn like HTTP, how do browsers work? What happens when JavaScript gets parsed? What is Node, right? Um, you need to like learn that before you're able to astutely make scientifically backed opinions and not emotional ones. Does that make sense? So you need to, yeah. Like you really, you need to like, you are gonna find your passion when you learn about networking protocols and it like puts a light bulb on in your head and you're like, damn, I think I wanna write APIs for a living. Like this whole like server client server client chatter is really interesting to me right like or like you like learn about css and like how it is like the best part of the web and like that gets you really excited and you're like actually i think i, I want to be a designer and i still want to write code so maybe ux ux engineer is what i want to be like right like don't prematurely shoot yourself in the foot making bad decisions based on mob herd culture right like Focus on your fundamentals. They will guide you to what you are excited about, right? Because it, you, you learn your fundamentals, you're gonna touch everything from the database to the CSS, right? And like everything in between, and you will find what is, is exciting for you. You will you will then know why certain tools are better than others. Why are they more performant? What problem are they solving 
uh, differently than the other thing, right? Then you make then you you make that decision for yourself. But you're just you're just not there yet. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so that was some hard truth, but also it sounds like that was the answer of just learning all the learning the uh the basics, the fundamentals, yeah. Foundational, foundational knowledge. Mm. All right. The next one is from Joshua. What specific technologies do you expect your junior developers to have today uh, that you see consistently missing from a new developer's set uh, skill set? Oh, interesting. Yeah. I, I so I would say the the expectation chart is very much like a pyramid, right? So where I think like the like tip of the pyramid is like junior dev, like just started, this is their first job, right? I like the expectations I have are very low, um, primarily like you are a good person, you have like an internal code of conduct and ethics like in which you operate with your team, um, you're eager to learn, you're hungry, you're curious, you're a good communicator. So that's like baseline. And then uh, technically what I want them to know, ideally I want them to have some ex like experience with Git, basics, base, mid to intermediate of Git. Uh, I want them to like have like, um, like let's say they're a front end developer, right? Like I want them to have like basic CSS, basic HTML, basic JavaScript. I don't need them to have framework experience. Um, I'm looking at fundamentals, right? Remember we talked about this. Um, and you know, same thing if they're writing backend, then you know it would be like basics of like, like I want them to know SQL, like I, I want them to like know how to create a table and insert to a table and very basic like you know six seven set of commands right view a table and i want them to know like um in the stack of their choice like how to create a basic http server with a couple of endpoints and that's about it i don't need them to know html or css if they're a back-end dev i don't give a fuck like right um but like just it's foundations like that's that's what you should be aiming for don't worry too much about tools. And if a place is like forcing you to know cer certain tools before before they start, I would ask them if that's been the case for every single person that they've hired. Because I can tell you like most people are learning lots of new tools every time they go to a new job, including me. Um, learning lots of new stuff now at my new job that I've never used before, right? So that's like an unfair expectation. You're welcome. <laughs> Joshua? Yeah, he's the one to ask the question, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Joshua would like to speak. Oh. oh. Um, how do we unmute him? I don't know. Or is he? Go ahead and unmute yourself if you can. Let's see. Oh, thought I was waiting. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, that's so funny. Uh, UX I, issue. Uh, file a ticket. UX issue. <laughs> <laughs> it might be open source if somebody wants to file an issue there. Boom. First <laughs> open source sure contribution. Yeah, pretty sure that's open source, but yeah. Totally. Yeah, this is what we can be working on. No <laughs> one <laughs> needing a project to contribute to. Don. <laughs> 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 Here's another one from Rudy. All right. Do you have any favorite productivity hacks or online resources you particularly enjoy, either like professionally or personally? Yeah, that's a great question. So productivity hacks, it's like I hate routine. I have ADD and I like hate routine. It like drives me nuts. It like I feel like it squashes my creative brain to have routine. Right, like I'm like, oh, why is God like, why, why does the universe hate me by forcing me to do certain things at certain times? Like, I hate it. That being said, the most way, I, the best way I'm productive <laughs> is like to have a routine. <laughs> right, so uh, ideally for me, like, um, I start my day really early, so usually like six o'clock at the latest seven. Um, so then I like have like a long chill start to my day. Um, so I like to ease into my day. My morning kind of sets the tone for the whole day. So if I have a shitty morning, I have a shitty day. Um, so it's just very important for me to get in the right headspace in the morning. 
And what I have is um, I have like a wind down routine, like not bedtime, like a workday wind down routine. So the last 15 minutes of the day for me at work, I like summarize everything I did, uh, everything I accomplished. I like put together my to-do list for the next day, like log all my action items. And I like, and then I like walk away from work and I'm not thinking about it anymore, right? Like if I don't write it down, I'm thinking about it. If I write it down, I can relax because it's gonna be there in the morning. So that kind of helps me detach from work mentally. Uh, and then the first 10 minutes of my day, I'm reviewing that and like putting together my game plan based on like what I accomplished yesterday and what I, what, what I said I wanted to do today, right? Um, and so that's kind of how I start and end my work day. And, um, you know, and then I start my work day, like I said, like I have like a long, slow start in the morning. And then I spend time doing some personal stuff. Like, um, so I take care of like, if I need to call my bank or, you know, if I need like, I, because I start so early, I can do a lot of things in the morning. Um, so I typically like do the hardest thing I don't want to do in the beginning of the day um, because then the rest of the day gets easier. So if there's some email that I really like don't want to send and I've been avoiding doing it, I make sure I do it like first thing in the morning the next day or something because I, yeah, just getting the hard shit out of the way, like it helps my procrastination brain, you know, like I get a reward and then I like want to do more. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think that, I mean, in terms of productivity hacks, yeah, I mean, I, I write, I take a lot of notes and I, I take hand notes. And then I like transcribe the important stuff back into my computer at the end of the day. Um, it just helps me in a meeting to be able to like write. And like, I have like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. I'll show you. I have like, I like pieces of like paper, like, like this. Like, this is like, like these, this is my notes, you know? Like I just take, so every morning I like take a new stack of white paper and I put the date on the top and then I number the bottom. And then, you know, so then every every day I have like anywhere between one to like nine pages of page notes. <laughs> and then I just go through it at the end of the day, you know, but it helps me like stay focused. It helps me capture action items very quickly, you know, without having to like switch context. Especially now I'm like a professional Zoomer. I'm sure all of you are too. <laughs> so it's like a good way to like, like be able to engage while like still, you know, easier than like I don't know looking at another part of your monitor I feel like writing is like faster for me I write it all on paper too yeah I use I use a notebook though I don't use loose sheets and I don't date it so yeah but but similar process I just scribble on paper like right. even I like even uh I do the same thing like you do the day before like wrote down what I did what I need to do it, it's helpful for stand-up because I never remember <laughs> like what I was doing and what I was gonna do. So I just have it written down and I can just like look I at have, my paper. I have a very bad short term memory. I have very good long term memory, but yeah, short term not so much. And um, there was a second part to that question, Brady. What was it? Tools or something? Sorry, I gotta go flip back and then also unmute myself. Um yeah, what um yeah, Michael, I, I would agree. A notebook, yeah. I need. I, I heard bullet journaling is, has been great. I feel like I have my own bullet journaling system, right? Like bullet, bullet journaling was created by somebody else who also had ADD who came up with a system for, for himself. And so- What is that, bullet journaling? Bullet journaling, yeah. You can read about it, but there's a whole book about it and a whole cult following. But like, mm -hmm. it's just a system for like taking notes and it's you use one notebook for everything, work, life, and then you just sort at the end of the day. So every day you have to spend time with your notebook and then you like, you know, but yeah, it's a, you check it out. <laughs> and this, somebody, this somebody rocket book, link it. the rocket book. Yeah. I can try to find a link also. Um, rocket book. Yes. It's, it, you can sync it. There's like, I think you take a picture of it or something and mm -hmm. you can put it like, digitizes everything immediately and then it can automatically add tags you can have little images so i need, it's like, I need rocket book <laughs> it's really cool and then you like microwave it or something and it <laughs> i 
it, it sounds like it's totally made up. I didn't believe, like, the guy that sent it to me initially jokes a lot, so I thought he was just totally <laughs> joking. But oh, microwave wait, it, wait, and it, it raises is, is, it, is, it, is it a device, or is it a, is it a software? It's like, it looks like a notebook. But it's uh, not. But it's not. I guess the paper probably feels a little bit. That different. is so fucking awesome. Wow. I, I think maybe I'm going to get one this year. I've been thinking about it for years. And is, now, is, it, is it like good? Michael says he hi he highly recommends it. If oh, you would like Michael. to. Hey, Michael. You, you want to come off mute? You want to mute yourself and tell us about this magical tool <laughs> and help um, um, answer the question? <laughs> yeah. No, um, so it's. It, the paper doesn't feel like traditional paper. It is a little bit like plasticky almost. Um, but uh, it it writes with uh, the, I think they're pilot. Yeah, pilot Frixian pens. Um, they're, they're an erasable pen that you could find for, for a while now. But um, the ink is heat sensitive. So you can, uh, you can either wipe the pages with like a wet washcloth or there are a couple of notebooks that uh, don't actually use metal in the in the spirals, and you can just throw it in the microwave, and it'll erase all the pages. Uh, but then it also has a little QR code in the in the bottom of the page uh, that the scanner recognizes, uh, and it's just an app on your phone, and you can send it off to uh, whatever you know. Google Drive or that sounds Dropbox like something I need. I'm just surprised that they haven't been built into the iPad. Um, I feel like there's like good note taking things on iPads too these days. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, thank you. I'll have to check it out. Um, but yeah, what was the second part of the question, Brady? <laughs> um, if there were any online tools, I think maybe. Uh, online was... tools for productivity? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. In oh, general, really? just and like resources. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I read the news a lot. I'm just a, real, a busy person. Honestly, I feel like I'm not very fun on the internet. Um, I'm. L l let me. Let me. I. I do have like a few things. Let me like uh, circle back with you on that. I think I'll. I think I'm gonna put together like a gist or an, a, a, like a blog post resource thing, and then I'll. I'll. I'll yeah. I think that's a, a good thing for me to to put out there into the universe. So I will circle back with you on that. Thank you for asking. Cool. We will follow up too. Yeah. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Uh, um, um, we're approaching one thirty. Are you okay to keep going? Come yeah, on. I think I have another ten minutes. I've got to go. My okay. fiance is like I'm getting hungry. <laughs> so. I'm getting hungry too. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's one more. Uh, do you have any recommendations for studying and improving algorithms specifically? Yeah. So for first sure. of all, I'm sorry that you are even needing to do that. Our hiring is so fucking broken in this industry. It's like, oh my God, you're like gonna center a div and they want you to like uh, you know, traverse a binary tree. Like what the what the motherfuck? Like that's such a disconnect, you know, and you know that it's broken when someone has to take somebody who has a job has to take time off uh, to do to study for their interview, to 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 work within the same industry. Like so you know that there's a disconnect there, right? Like so, so I'm sorry that you have to do that. Um, in terms of learning algorithms, I would say uh, whatever is your primary language, so like Python or JavaScript, so I would say make sure that you are using resources that are targeted towards that. Um, so for me, I would say if you, Py, both Python and if there's Python and JavaScript, um, you, um, Educative has a really good uh, bunch of algorithms classes uh, that are really nice, and they have like data visualization of the algorithm, so you can visualize what a linked list looks like or a tree looks like. Or um, so it's it's I would highly recommend that they have a good data structures in JavaScript. Um, also, the cracking the coding interview is pretty good too, um, and there is I, I think the book itself is in Java. Which is still very readable, but um, if you know there is a JavaScript, like there's a repo online, someone can find it uh, for cracking the coding interview, a JavaScript solutions. Uh, I think there's a old JavaScript one, like old meaning JavaScript uh, pre, it's an ES5, and then there's an ES6 one too with more modern or ES6 plus like with more modern JavaScript, but. Um, Yes, yeah, hacking them. Yeah, the, the educative interview tracks are, if you get through that, you should be fine. Um.
but I don't, I don't, I've never personally used resources like leak code or hacker or anchor or anything like that. It's just, so I can't comment on that, unfortunately. But I do think, you know, for better or worse, like there is a lot of value in learning your data structures. Um, it, it will, you know, that that will be beneficial to you. Um, all the puzzles and algorithms, I mean, they'll be, I mean, you know, I, 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 I'm not, I question how useful those will be. So. Sam is always so much faster at me that <laughs> finding those links, I almost press send. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, cracking the coding view is pretty good. Yeah, I like, I, li I like, what's her name? The woman who um, wrote that book, she's quite reasonable and she has a lot of good advice. So she's got some videos on YouTube. You should check, check them out too. Um, okay, here's the next question. Any tips on researching companies for your first role? Yeah, like I said, I, for me, the formula with junior developers is big engineering team. Ideally one that has hired uh, junior de developers successfully in the past, and those junior some of and and those junior developers have been able to move up within the company, right? Because you don't want to be somewhere where they're like going to keep you junior forever, like you have to leave, right? To to progress, it's always nice to show upward mobility within one company. Granted, like for me, a lot of times I've done I've jumped, but I've also been promoted at companies, so I have like a balance, right? But it's nice to show both that you want to show that you have been able to stay within a company long enough to build trust and move up within the organization. Like that says a lot about you, you know? And then also someone who's able to take risks and like jump and make a non-lateral move somewhere else, right? So both are good. Um, Do you have sorry. tips on how to find those companies though? Like oh, uh, tips, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm working on a project that is gonna help you identify those companies very soon. So, um, so Brady and Sam, you should, uh, you should uh, circle back with me soon. Okay. <laughs> but but for now, look look on LinkedIn. Think about big tech. Um, I would say you can look at uh, I, a nice way to look at it if you're somebody who's underrepresented is like find another underrepresented pe person in the community, see where they work, look at where their friends work, right? Like see where women are in leadership roles, see where people of color are like happy, right? and like target those companies too, like. Great. Um, any recommendations for staying connected to your team as well as staying motivated while you're in a remote work environment? Yeah, so, so the thing is like, it's funny, like COVID kind of has accelerated us, right? So I think we were all headed towards this trajectory. COVID just made it happen faster. Um, so what we need to do to catch up with this little growth spurt that we've had is um, we need to really retrofit our cultures to be remote first, right? Um, and so I would say start a book club or a reading club or a Slack channel in your company called Remote Work or something like that and share resources on like remote culture and like start discussions with people about like, how can we be better? Like, should we do like a Friday social thing that's like optional every week, you know? Um, like, should people like, should we be conscious to still have lunch together and do virtual lunches? Like, just start a dialogue, right? Like, be the change you want to be, right? Um, and there's a lot of really good resources. Uh, I can link you to some later, but if you wanna add them, somebody can Google them now. One I would recommend is GitHub, um, GitLab has a remote working culture guide that they just published. Uh, it's very in depth. Uh, I would look at that. Basecamp folks have a lot of really good stuff on this. Um, Mozilla has some stuff, um, you know, um, GitHub has some stuff, uh, you know, so you can kind of, uh, Atlassian has stuff on this as well, you know, so, um, but anyways, I but just make sure that like you have you're adjusting your culture to meet the norm, right? You can't like, you can't keep driving 60 miles an hour on a local road, right? When you get off the highway, right? You have to adjust your speed. Same way you have to adjust your culture, right? So just, it has to be active. Um, did that answer your question, whoever asked it? Definitely gave a couple of ideas. Um, I can get these posted in a second. Um, yeah, hopefully it'll be some suggestions in there. Like, I know somebody had talked about 
their company that they were working at, one of my former colleagues, they don't do 60 minute meetings anymore. They only schedule 45 or like 50 minute meetings because the expectation is you have to walk to a meeting in the office. So that's kind of like a little break. They don't want people to just have to click off one meeting, go to the next meeting and like have three hours where they're just glued to their computer. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. That's a very good point. That's a really good point. Yeah. Thank you for linking that the GitLab thing. I would recommend reading that. And quite frankly, if you're interviewing, I think being a remote work advocate and or being more versed with that. And I think that's something you could even speak about in your interview, right? Like, as like, hey, I'm really prepared for this job and this is why, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so, so yeah, um, any, any like last question before we kind of wrap? I, I have to like eat, I'm like starving, so. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know, if, if you feel like one more? Yeah, yeah, one more is fine. Cool, uh, this one is from Ryan. What is a question you wish people or junior devs would ask you more often? about fundamentals and not about frameworks. Does that, does that answer your question, Brian? Yeah, yeah, thank you. I'm sick of getting that question from junior devs where they're like, what's your stack? Lamp mean, I'm burn, I'm like, oh my God, stop, <laughs> like, stop. <laughs> my ears are about to bleed, stop. Like you're dating yourself, you know what I mean? Um, do not associate yourself as a React developer. Do yourself a favor. Don't even associate yourself as a JavaScript developer. You are a software engineer. You solve problems. What tools? Depends on the problem. You get my dig? And do not like pigeonhole yourself into a stack. Because you could like, like you're, you, three years from now, you could discover the magic of Clojure or like Haskell or like Elixir or like Elm and like be re or closure script or just, and be like super nerdy out about that. And all of a sudden you want to do something completely different, right? You shouldn't have to feel guilty about that. There's no loyalty here. Like we're very polyamorous in software, right? Like this is the one place where you can just follow your mind and your heart and you should. So just don't, don't prematurely like box yourselves in and keep your marketing open, right? Of course, there's it's, there's no issue saying that I'm a web developer, right? Like you're really you're writing software that goes on. You're either like an IoT developer, or a web developer, or a mobile developer. Everybody kind of falls into those those three categories these days, right? So um, it's just that don't 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 pigeonhole yourself and like associate yourself with like cultures and or whatever else. You know, cultures or tools which are not going to be cool in a in a year. Trust me on that. You know. So yeah, Ryan, cool. I'm so glad that you we got to get to that question then. So are you are you a React developer anymore, Ryan, or are you a developer that knows React? Which one? The second one now. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. You passed the test. <laughs> All right. Was there was there was there anything? One last one last question. I think that was a quick one. Ready. Um, Let's see. I mean, gosh, <laughs> there's there's this one that I had looked at and it just got upvoted. It's, it's, okay. it's a deep one though. That's okay, um, it's fine. We can go deep for this last one. So what if I feel depressed and burnt out from being rejected from many interviews? And because of that, whenever I program, it's associated with rejection. Yeah, that's that's real fucking talk. Thank you to whoever asked that. Um, that is, I'm so glad, you know, thank you for uploading that everybody. Um, that is real. That is, that is a very real problem. Um, and to that I say, the definition of insanity is, is trying the same thing twice and expecting different results, right? So you need to take a step back and evaluate your strategy, uh, get a mentor, ideally more than one. So you kind of do some bias correction and get some feedback from folks. Um, and you need to come up with a game plan, a new game plan, right? You just, you just, you're doing something, something, something's off. 
well, I, I, sorry, the industry's off, right? We're all off when we interview. Like we all have to do the secret handshakes and do the secret dance. And that's like, why are we doing this? Like, why can't you just have a 90 day program? Most states are at will. 90 day program, if it doesn't work out, doesn't work out. Do we really need to be such gatekeepy assholes? Like seriously, right? Like, so just know that it's not you. I said this in the beginning, it's us, right? Like you are, you are not the problem. We have failed you tremendously as like a leadership group, as an industry. We've failed the world, let alone like people that are part of our community, okay? Like Facebook is a thing, um, you know, mass surveillance is a thing, algorithmic injustice is a thing, right? Like bias in machine learning is a thing. We, you know, so we've, we've failed on a lot of fronts. Um, so, you know, just know that um, but but really, like I said, taking a step back, finding more ideally more than one, one, one mentor to give you feedback, figuring out if you just happen to have a fluke of horrible places that you interviewed at, which is not un out of the it's not it's not even unlikely, right? Like I can believe you just had like five douchebag interviews in a row, right? Like that is not an anomaly like, or you, that is not, sorry, not an anomaly. That is not completely out of the question, right? So just don't be so hard on yourself. Um, rejection is hard for everyone. Everyone gets rejected, you know? Um, I made it to the final round of a Facebook uh, interview like several years ago and didn't get it. Get, and I was really confused like why I didn't move to the next round, um, you know? And I'm pretty sure there was a lot of bias elements there because I answered the questions and did, you know, but like maybe not the way that they wanted or, you know, or maybe I didn't have the benefit of the doubt, right? Or whatever, right? Not, not a white dude, have boobs and brown, whatever, right? Like who knows? Um, but I'm just saying it happens and it's never easy, but you should know that like, it's not you. It's this hazing process. And we all just, until we figure out a way to, to stop hazing people when they get jobs, like we, we have to all just go through this weird uh, ritual hazing called tech interviews. It's like kind of fucked up if you think about it. Like any, anybody like just objectively, like if you just had like aliens or if you just like objectively described some, you made up some industry and you told a bunch of like people in a control group about the process, they would be like, what the fuck kind of bullshit is this? This is like, you know, so it's not you. Also to that person in specific, I'm completely willing to like talk with you and meet with you about this. So just um, circle back with Brady and I will give you my personal contact information. If I'm just putting myself in the hat, you don't, you don't, you don't have to reach out. I just want to say that you can. Thank you for that. You're welcome. That it, it is so hard. I, I so hard, and we're gonna fix this. You know, Brady. Maybe I should work with you on some of those projects since you and Sam are as passionate about fixing this. Y'all want to really help me? I have some very bold, big mission stuff. So, I just, yeah, I, I just, it's I just, it's, it's, it's just, it's down the priority list for me right now because I have some big things launching, and then, I, so I put that out to 2021, but. If I have your help, maybe we can do it this year. <laughs> Hell, right. it's COVID. I can't tell. Is it a Saturday or Monday? Like I don't, I don't, I don't fucking have a life after work. Okay, <laughs> we can do this maybe. <laughs> Actually, I have a big life after work. That's not true. But, 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 like we, we, you know, if I have the right people to collaborate with, maybe we can do this sooner. So we should talk. And Brady, feel free to like give my info to uh, the person who asked that question. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I'd love to pass it on. So whoever anonymous is. <laughs> yeah. Anonymous. <laughs> Thank um, you for being brave enough to ask that question, even though you are anonymous. You are not. Mm -hmm. That does not take away an ounce of your bravery. Thank you. Well, wonderful. Um, I know everyone's getting hungry. And yeah. <laughs> Mel, you said that. Oh, yeah. Anna. Yes, we, you, you can help too. 
That would be great. I would agree. Yeah. Well, I don't, I would, I wouldn't, I don't say I would need juniors. I would say I would need developers. And yes, I would be, I, I will, I will reach out. Um, we have a list of people that are here now, right? Um, I, I have a list of the names uh, just from this chat and the people who asked questions in the Slido. I don't necessarily have a list of every single person who attended. Um, but everyone, if we're not already connected, either in the Slack channel that we have, maybe we can post that link again, if anyone is interested. Um, that'd probably be the best way to just make a channel in Slack instead of a, a big, like, LinkedIn group message or something like that. Um, well, that's great. Well, I'm... Very excited that you are excited about all this, y'all. This is great. Um, and so, yeah, just just reach out to Brady, give her your info, and then once we get around to kicking off this project, we'll figure out how y'all can get involved. And I would love you. I would love for you to be involved. I would love for you to be a committer on this project. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Okay, y'all. This was so fun. I'm sorry for being like rambly, but. <laughs> You no, get, thanks for joining us. You yeah. get you get cranky in your old age. <laughs> <laughs> you kids. <laughs> but you know what? Speaking of you kids, though, you kids do have a lot of great resources. I can tell you when I was coming up, the plethora of community, the Dev Twos, the Code Newbies, the 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 the, the San Francisco Junior Dev Happy Hours. Like they did not exist. It was like a barren universe of like not this so you know so progress we're making progress so i just hope in five years we're like way better than where we are today right like so we don't even have to have a group like this like we, we shouldn't need it right like we should do it out of out of wanting to learn from each other not out of wanting to help each other right <laughs> it's a difference <laughs> so yeah yeah no legit legit so um, so thank you all for the for the pleasure of your company and your time. And thank you for being vulnerable. Thank you for listening. Um, thank you for asking. And thank you for like I welcome you to this industry. And I'm and, and I apologize like again that like there's ritual hazing and gatekeeping that is making it like harder for you to like to like contribute as fast as you'd like, you know. But if you hang in there, I you know, I I, I wish you the best of luck. Well, lovely. Um, I think I know that you need to leave a lot of times at the end. If any, um, well, I guess. Yeah, I, mean, I, I have. I mean, I mean, Jin, my, my partner hasn't opened the door yet. So <laughs> I'm just like dressed and ready. <laughs> yeah, no, what's up? Go, go, go for it, Brady. Um, I was going to say that we could stop this live stream if anyone would like. I, I, we like to Not do that, like off the record, off the record questions. Yeah. Well, okay. yeah, off the record questions good. or just intros. Um, oh yeah, that would be great. Uh, intros would be awesome. Also, um, was this recorded? I, I hope so. I'd love to share it with um, some of my mentors. It was, it was streaming. <laughs> yeah. So there, but, there will be a link to pass around at the end oh, of it. Oh, phenomenal. That's still <laughs> Okay, great. There we go. I'm going to end it. Are you sure you want to end? Yes. All right. So now